Well, I am aware that my lecture comes just before the coffee break, but I'll assume the risk and I'll try to adapt my face at the same time as I keep an eye on your expression and see when your faces start begging for coffee or nibbles. I just wanted to introduce myself um, and I want to say I'm very excited to be here today as I remember one year ago when we were at the Social Currency Conference in Rivas. I was sitting next to Luis and he was already thinking about doing this conference here in Safra. So it's very exciting to see this dream come true here today. So this is why I also want to thank the heart, the core of these uh, meetings, Luis and Irene, the organizers, as they form a perfect team that combines taking off and landing aspects of this project. And um, when I talk about Baramedi, I always uh, talk about Luis and Irene, as uh, without their work and their efforts, this conference would not be possible at all. So this is why I'm so, so excited to be here today. I also want to thank uh, Safra's Town Hall and uh, AXIT, the regional body for international cooperation and development, for their support to this project. Today, we'll be talking about both local and global concepts. We will talk about the SDG, Social Development Goals. I come from Mr. Maduras University, but I am also an activist in, in the promotion of local currencies. Actually, my role at university has a lot to do with this activism, as uh, I believe that the university is a place to change these things. I am the only teacher talking about local currencies to my students, no matter which subject I have to teach. Yesterday, there were a few Varamedi coins going around in class, so I always take the chance to talk about this, and I really believe that the future generations have to be aware of the social ways of economy through local currencies. I'm a social worker and a sociologist, and I have been working for many years in, in local and rural development projects, along with Franco. I used to live in the north of Madrid, and I was working mainly locally there. Then I moved on to wider projects at a regional level. level. And I remember one of my students coming to me saying, Jose Luis, you are the only one talking to us about these things. Right after your class, we have the economics teacher who talks about speculation, how to earn a lot of money in the stock market. So I really think the new generations need to know different and alternative models if we want to change the economy system. This is why I'm saying I am a university activist, really. To me, it makes a lot of sense to, me, uh, to be here today talking about SDG. I don't know if you know which day was yesterday. They were talking about it on the radio too. It was the International Day for Poverty Eradication. And I don't know if you're aware of Extremadura's rating according to the AROPE rate. Well, yes, we are at 43, 44.5%, while the regional, the national average in Spain is 26%. And as soon as I touch any controversial issues, my micro starts failing. <laughs> there must be some kind of connections here. So anyway, I feel very um, uncomfortable to see Extremadura's map all in red color, showing the, the high poverty levels that we are still having here. I, I really feel very uncomfortable to see this. So I think it is vital to talk about different ways of development. And this is a, a debate, a discussion that we must keep in mind. Today, I want to launch a deep reflection about SDG. This is something we have already started talking about, so I will not explain again, um, as Franco has already uh, explained it, where the current system is taking us to. As you can see here, 
um, where the traditional or orthodox money leads to. As all of us are, who are here today are already conscious about the fact that debt money and uh, compound interest takes us to poverty. As you can see in this slide of one of the most famous sociologists of all times, I'm sure you know him, El Roto, who says, if you don't have money to pay what you owe me, ask me for another credit to pay the previous one. It leads us to the carrot and stick principle as we keep on slavering poorer countries and colonizing other regions, therefore colonizing other people's lives. So as we speak about global SDG, we can apply it to our own region too. So we'll be really talking about a global concept, local and global at the same time. You see, the micro has come back as my speech is more moderate now. Franco has also quickly talked, as you can see here, and this slide can be attributed to a great economist, Margaret Kennedy, who passed away as well as her colleague Bernard Lieter, who will be paid tribute to by Miguel, and is another very important leading figure. So this slide shows that the current economy system is just creating hollow spaces, generating currency circulation that is really speculative money going immediately out of the local circuits. I'll use again one of, one of Franco's slides to illustrate another metaphor Pardon? Oh, yes, fantastic. We have Andreo Elzagua here, who is the creator of this slide. This slide is becoming uh, viral. Yes, Franco used it too. I actually wanted to use it for talking about another thing. I didn't know it was made by, by Andreo. This is, is, is that yours? Yeah, this is like when you send um, Mimi to the outside space, yes? Well, now we can finally mention Andreo as the author of this. Thank you very much. I totally ignored it. And your slide is circulating like a Mimi on WhatsApp. You should put your name on it. Anyway, I wanted to use this slide not to speak about the need to have currencies circulating in order to keep a community alive. Not just complementary currencies, but also the euro currency. It is necessary to keep it going around small shops in a definite district or community, rather than having it going directly to a big surface or supermarket. This is a reflection that I like to share in, uh, in many occasions as I can, I, I, not just for the local currencies, but also for the euro itself. We must consider this. There's another example I like very much by Greco, another big name when talking about social currencies. That is the metaphor of the human body and the blood. If blood doesn't reach every single organ in the human body, then will become, they will become necrotic and, and will die. So money is like the blood. It must circulate constantly and reach every single corner to keep it alive. When a local shop closes down, it means that money didn't get there. So it, this is why this metaphor about blood and human body is so important. We're here to speak about SDG as they are putting pressure on us and making us adopt a more systemic thinking, even if we already understand that what we do locally really has a global impact. SDGs, as you know, come from the former Millennium Goals, and they are compelling us to line up and align our policies and our activities. This circle that you surely know by heart and have seen in so many occasions lead to other circle that was also mentioned by Franco, which is the circular economy. Circular thinking, think again or rethink, and that, that's one more R to be added to the existing three R's. Now we are uh, five R's. There are five R's. I don't know if you are aware of it. Well, one of these R's stands for rethink and redesign things so that they don't generate any waste, so that they accord with this metaphor of the circular economy, by which every company or activity is like a tree that doesn't leave any waste, but only soil nutrients that come back to the tree again. So the sustainable development goals are a kind of alternative facing GDP's inability as a social development indicator. 
I wanted to share this reflection today and uh, tomorrow we'll have a workshop to discuss about the need to create new indicators to measure, to evaluate, to know how the world is going. Through this reflection that I'm sharing here today, and I'll do it quickly before your expressions show me that it's coffee time. What we're doing here is to start a sort of dialogue or discussion with everyone, with the currencies, with the society, to find out in which ways social and local currencies can contribute to SDG. This thought must be the starting point of a deeper reflection or even a research beyond what we are saying here today. The process that I'm presenting here today is based on my experience of so many years analyzing different currency models, participating in some of them, and as Franco mentioned earlier, since 2012, when we started with the Mora, the local currency of Sierra Norte, in a rural area up to now, this year of experience have, made, have taken us to these reflections and considerations we are sharing here today. Franco has already explained how a local currency works, so how a systemic thought works, created inside the community and uh, requiring mutual trust, and also requiring, let's say, filling in the gaps that the current state structures and the markets are unable to clear up. This is the role that complementary currencies are playing, and for this reason, as you can see in this slide, showing the Climate Change Summit in 2040, Noah's Ark getting ready to save some species. It is perfectly possible to change Noah's Ark for a new space station uh, up there. The rich people are building to live uh, one day, to live in one day. So it's real. We, we're talking about climate change and summits, but things don't really change much. As we look for new indicators, um, complementary currencies can also work as a GDP index indicator. We must integrate it as part of all the group of indicators that give information beyond GDP as indicators of a region or a territory's welfare. There's a need to make public organizations understand that complementary currencies are useful and necessary. As we're running out of time, we're seeing it every day in climate change panels. Either we act quickly or the system collapses. Today, we talk about GDP, and I'll try to make it short. I want to show you a new classification of currencies. Franco showed you several currency classifications, some of which were commented by Enric Montesa. Currency classifications are easy to get from many articles or documents, but there is a classification of currencies attending to their type, A, B, or C, based on their connection with GDP. The A type are connected to GDP as they are backed by the euro currency, such, such as the Grama from Santa Coloma, the Gramanet we have here, Andreu today, or the Varamedi, or any other currencies that are endorsed by the euro can be recorded and have a connection with GDP, as Franco was explaining earlier. The B type, also called B2B, business to business, mentioned by Franco as well, such as the Veer Bank or the Sardex, that are playing an important role as a counterbalance. We haven't talked much about it today, but as you may know, in Switzerland, with the Veer Bank, when the Swiss franc enters a cyclical crisis, the Veer Bank goes up and works as a counterbalance. These cycles, that some people consider they happen just by chance, but that really are a consequence of capitalism, as Kondratiev said in the 1920s, these cyclical crises are created by the system itself. So these currencies, when there's a cyclical crisis, they increase their value and they are able to survive and avoid the collapse of the territories they're in. And this is what we, that the Beer Bank has been doing during all these years. There's also the C2C, or citizen to citizen, community to community type, it's the, C, the C type. These currencies don't have any kind of connection with GDP. They are created by the community, such as the community exchange systems called uh, C, uh, CES or CEL in French. And they are currencies that are not connected to GDP, as I'm saying. So following Franco's reflection, and based on our experience of all these years analyzing different currencies, we can say that type A currencies, 
such as Grama or Varamedi, supported by local town halls and endorsed by the euro currency, other type reaching a wider coverage, getting even small local shops involved. Local businesses, unlike the communities, usually prefer to cooperate, or sorry, to operate in euro and are reluctant to use complementary currencies. So it's very important to have a local authority behind, such as the town hall, supporting the project and helping to create confidence and even a learning space where both currencies can coexist. We've seen and experienced some cases where different currencies created by the community did not really allow any type of integration of local businesses as they considered that any company having employees with a salary belongs to the capitalist system and they have not they, they were not allowed uh, to enter the community. As a result, uh, small alternative consumption clusters were created, but they did not spread or nor grow. And we've experienced some of these cases ourselves and even analyzed them from a researcher's point of view. This is why we can say that the A-type can offer the widest coverage and can contribute to a transition to another model. We're also here today to think about new indicators, such as the complementary domestic product that substitutes the GDP, and try to create indicators that allow to get in in-depth analysis of the real impact of these social or supportive currencies in the territory. Of course, we'll still, we'll still have the, de the headlines about the increase of GDP, as we're seeing every day in the media. Well, you know the way headlines are written, but we have to try to change things up and show people that GDP is not really telling us anything about human welfare rate, neither about development. Yesterday we had an interesting discussion about what development really means. Is it economic development or people's integral development? Do we necessarily need to grow economically with the risk of collapsing or should we rather look for other ways of satisfying our needs? So we also leave this concept here, the complementary domestic product, to keep on working on it. Now, what I'm going to do is to show you a wide panoramic view of how complementary currencies can contribute to SDGs based on today's reflections. We've analyzed them, attending to their capability, low, medium or high capability, to influence or have an impact on a specific sustainable development goal looking also at their period of impact, their term, short term, long term. We're trying to make a first approach to see how currencies, how they, can, they cannot reach everywhere, neither have an impact on every SDG, but many of them really offer a starting point to start working. And it is important that the public administration also understands this point. This is why we call this approach, hoping that in the future there will be further in-depth research about it. I guess that most of you have already heard about SDG, even if you don't know all of them or, or how many there are. At least the colorful circle, I'm sure you've seen it before, haven't you? There are 17 SDGs divided into different targets and indicators that must be achieved. So we've analyzed the different complementary currencies to see their capability to adjust to a specific goal and also their period of impact. One of the main goals in the end of po is the end of poverty. It is actually goal number one, which obviously requires in many places strong action from the state or from the international community to try to satisfy those needs of human resources and equipment. In those places where it is not possible to create any community exchanges, is where the complementary currencies have a role to play. I have an example here of a social currency with a level two impact of, with a level of impact of two and a medium period of impact on the target. And I'm talking about the Bangla Pesa. It is worth to learn about it. It is an experience carried out in Kenya where there's no currency to exchange. There is poverty. There are human, human resources to satisfy needs, and there, is, and there are needs, but there's no money. So by creating a currency that can be exchanged, we contribute to the revival of all this, to the appreciation of human resources and the satisfaction of needs. This would be the goal number one, as I'm saying, the end of poverty. 
Zero hunger is another important goal. Complementary currencies do not intervene in cases of extreme poverty because it is the NGOs and different organizations who take action with resources when there are severe malnutrition problems. But complementary currencies play an important role in a second stage when there is food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is necessary in a territory so that it is not dependent on global economic transactions nor on food exports. And complementary currencies play a vital role to cause impact on food sovereignty. We also gave a level two on the capability to have an impact on this goal in a medium uh, period of time, in, in the medium term. Not at first stage, but definitely a complementary currency could have an impact on the hunger problem. And I won't talk about other people's lectures, but a complementary currency will allow consumption or fresh and or consumption of fresh and first need products, thanks to the creation of a social currency. Health and welfare is another goal, number three, quite a wide one, but there are levels like level one with a low impact of currencies when health and welfare are the priority in a territory with severe malnutrition problems where complementary currencies would not be helpful at the first stage to buy medical equipment or important treatments however at a second stage and we can we can um, ask uh, miguel yasuyuki sitting here who is an expert in japanese currencies it would allow to create care systems, maybe not surgery or treatments, but a care and welfare system that can contribute to a dependency system. The Japanese currency for care, please correct my pronunciation, Miguel. Is it Furai Kipu? Yes, Furai Kipu is a Japanese local currency created for elderly people's care. So uh, I'm talking about currencies that contribute to the dependency system. There are other examples of currencies. There's one created by a remarkable woman, although unfortunately history as usual leaves women out of any prominence in all these stories, as we've seen in many occasions in Japan. So care systems can be reinforced by complementary currencies indeed. The fourth goal is uh, quality education. We have a good example of a currency promoted by the great economist Bernard Lieter, as I mentioned earlier, who recently passed away. He was like a lighthouse for all of us who work with complementary currencies and a continuous reference. He talked about a currency, the Saber, to be used in the university environment so that students could commit some of their time to help other students. And they pay for their own studies by means of this currency, according to their work and contributions to the community. I'm in a similar situation myself. I'm working at Extremadura's university, and we're trying to promote a currency to be used at the whole campus. We want to show how it is possible from a public institution such as the university to have enrollment discounts, to create academic training opportunities for students, either teaching or helping people with disabilities inside the campus. The use of a specific currency at university would allow, would allow all these things. They would fulfill a transversal goal as they would satisfy all the needs that not even the academic system can satisfy. And especially a huge learning experience about a new model of economy, not based in competition or competitiveness, but in cooperation. So in this case, the C you see here means that the impact can happen in a short period of time when talking about a currency linked to quality education. Gender equality, the fifth goal. We have not identified any currency specialized in this goal, but almost every social currency or a great deal of them because of their principles and their criticism to the existing system 
they have the gender quality, the gender equality debate always present, and they have a eco eco feminist perspective. Not all of them reflect this. There's a still a long way to go. As I'm saying, there isn't currently any currency specifically devoted to this goal. But when you analyze the values, goals, and principles of different currencies as they are created, you find these eco feminist values. Yes? Medusina? About gender. That's great. We should talk about it later, Carmen as it is very interesting. It's very interesting to know the nature of each currency based on their, on their own goals. There are as many currencies as, as goals. And this one is about gender equality. So even if gender is a transversal goal, it is important to have a, a specific currency for it because it makes the problem visible to others and makes a criticism to the patriarchal capitalist system. So this is a very important role, of course. Clean water and sanitation. I have put level one because very often the currencies have little capability to have an impact on at a first stage. And this is also why I put an L, meaning that is, uh, this impact will be in the long term. However, this exercise we're doing here to analyze currencies and the SDGs allow us to have some hope, for instance, about having discounts in the use of drinkable water in certain places based on the use of our local currency inside the community. If, if I cooperate in my community, and then I can have a reward as it is happening with waste. Alfredo will talk about it later, as it is, ha it is happening with many different currencies. But anyway, I will comment on this later. Now, just saying that it is difficult to, for complementary currencies to have an impact on clean water and sanitation at a first stage because this role corresponds to public administration and organization at a global level. Water should not be stolen from any community. And we could also mention something that is affecting me personally. We should not allow a lithium mine to be open in Cáceres, which is one more problem we're dealing with right now. I will tell you later during the break. So we must not allow water to be taken away from any territories. Affordable and clean energy is goal number seven. Here we've marked medium period and level two, as there's some capability to have an impact on this goal. There's a, there are already some currencies that can be used to pay our energy bills, which has, which has been one of the issues since the beginning. There are possibilities even of money creation, such as the Pileon. I invite you to discover these currencies, which are based on the blockchain technology and they allow to create money based on the production of renewable renewable energy. So we can already buy and manage energy using complementary currencies at the same time as we allow money creations. Technology is producing new currency models and new ways of satisfying needs, as we will see during these days. So it is interesting to note that this goal is already being achieved. Decent work and economic growth. This is this goal is as it sounds. Criticism of economic growth can be made from many different angles. What is economic growth? Do we need to grow economically in a constant way? However, decent, decent work can be influenced positively by the use of complementary currencies, both for the creation of decent work and also for undertaking new businesses and new working models. We went through a case study in La Mora in Madrid and saw how there were some people who during the 2008 recession, which became more serious later in 2012, 2012, people who had been pushed out of the system completely, I mean, they could do this or that, but the, sim the system simply did not need them, their knowledge of, or, nor, nor their skills. For some of those people, taking part in a social currency project has allowed them to reinvent themselves, to explore new professional spaces at their work in a community, and it has allowed them to start a new uh, learning process and even manage their own business, as it is the case of Orvalu, who started making handcrafted products in La Mora and ended up opening his own shop. 
after his, uh, this learning process where there were exchanges in Mora currency, even professional training. And apart from the physical shop, he also has an online platform. He went from reinventing himself at the beginning of the creation of the Mora currency to have his own shop having his own shop. All these processes in the community was possible thanks to the Mora currency and the community work. So it's important to recognize the impact that currencies have on this goal. Industry, innovation and infrastructure. It's true that it is often difficult to use a complementary currency in some cases. But when it comes to industry, innovation and infrastructure, certain currencies, such as B2B currencies mentioned by Franco, like Veerbank or Sardex, which are allowing companies to keep working despite the national and foreign currencies being in trouble, are actually creating innovation in spaces and new business infrastructure. So we can say that complementary currencies are playing an important role in the achievement of this goal. There's also a criticism here, as the currencies then do not fit in this alternative system, like Veerbank or others, they, they essential complementary currencies, and this is something we have to cope with every day. The tenth goal is reduced inequalities. I'll try to make it as short as possible. Your faces are showing me it's coffee time. Reduced inequalities is a wide goal. If we look at it carefully, we can find gender inequalities, inequalities between different countries and also within uh, a country. Inequalities between different countries are difficult to be influenced by the local currencies, especially as we talk about national products and so on. However, when there is no currency at all in a specific village or community and there are inequalities at a local level, they can be solved with the use of complementary currencies. But when we're talking about a wider scope like country to country inequalities, it is more complicated that they work. Unless we consider leaders a reflection about going from the Europe of nations to the Europe of regions, and I would even add to the Europe of bioregions. Sustainable cities and communities. Sorry, I know I'm trying to go faster. Well, if I see that your stomach is, uh, your stomachs uh, sound louder than my voice on the microphone, then I will definitely stop here. Let's go slow but steady then. Regarding sustainable cities and communities, obviously complementary currencies are playing an important role here. I've put a C or short term for impact. We already know cases of currencies having an impact on sustainable cities and communities, such as the Gramma or here the Varamedi. We have cases where sustainability is subject to waste management, something we'll see later on too. Complementary currencies benefit all these systems and they, are, they also promote proximity consumption as and other types of production models. So the fact that this goal is so wide and it is about sustainability allows complementary currencies to be more effective on it. Responsible consumption and production it has a short-term impact. It is what we've been talking about. A local currency that establishes a territory's richness leads to local consumption and promotes responsible consumption and production, not only within your own community, but also globally. A smaller carbon footprint and a lower CO2 emissions will lead to a more responsible consumption and production, referred in goal number 12. Climate action. There are no specific currencies devoted to climate issues. This is why we put level three and long term. But some currencies are definitely being positive in processes, processes that have to do with this climate. Despite having received instructions not to modify the SDGs circle, I've done it twice already. I've inserted the MOLA here, as Alfredo will talk about it later. The MOLA is an example of a currency that is playing an important role in different processes of carbon reduction, proximity consumption, carbon capture by means of composting processes, there are no specific currencies for climate goal, but we have currencies like Toreque or No mentioned by Franco with their own environmental goals, but not devoted to climate action. Goal number 14, life before water. I think uh, if we think about another or of liters currencies, the Terra, 
we could claim that if we look after bio biodiversity below water, if we look after the bottom of the sea, we could be rewarded in a specific type of currency. And at an international level, we can point out the value of our biomass by means of complementary currencies. We have a type of currencies here called M-type, the matter currencies. We are playing with the word matter as it can stand for material like organic matter, biodiversity, but also stands for mother in an effort to emphasize the women's or mother's role like Mother Earth with which other orthodox economic systems try to hide. Goal number 15, life on land. Here we've put level two and the short to medium term because the Resilience Institute is talking about biodiversity as the main indicator of health inside a territory. So why not promoting the conservation of biodiversity by means of money creation? This is a strategy that must be considered and explored. So I'm just launching ideas and reflections for further research here. Peace, justice and strong institutions, one of the widest goals. We haven't found any currency that adjusts completely to this goal of peace, justice and strong institutions, but it's such a wide concept that we can work on many of the values despite no specific currency has been found devoted to this. The last SDG is, is a partnership for the goals. Number 17, we consider that this goal can be influenced through complementary currencies because it talks about the creation of partnerships between countries and territories. And it makes sense to talk about what I'm saying here. Go beyond the Europe of the regions and talk about bioregions with different currencies cooperating together, skipping the official regional administration. We're very close to Portugal here. So we could think about um, an encounter or a conference of Iberian uh, currencies and work together between the two countries in order to achieve goals. One more proposal we've, we, we are launching here, as we're seeing many European institutions uh, talking about complementary currencies, they are supporting them with public money. So th there's, there's a need of creating a goal number 18 called social currencies for adaptation and anticipation. Since we all have in mind that money is vital, that complementary currencies are necessary to achieve goals, that have to do with the um, relocalization of the production that would help achieving many objectives. So we suggest here the creation of a new SDG for adaptation and anticipation to climate change through complementary currencies. I will finish with some final reflections at the same time as I invite you to start a, a debate from now on. Not every social and complementary currencies can have an impact on the achievement of sustainable development goals in the short term, but some of them can be very helpful. I've written here the goals where, where there is already a clear influence of social and complementary currencies. Not all of them will have it in the same period of time, but some of them are doing it and we need to keep exploring them. And we also must get the vulnerable, vulnerable communities involved. When I say vulnerable communities from the perspective of the social intervention on community development, I mean that Extremadura with 44 rate of poverty is suffering the same severe problems as other countries referred to as poor. So the current system is leaving us out in many aspects and we are experiencing this every day and this is a controversial reflection. So we have to work on vulnerability both at an international and at a local level. We have to find new indicators that allow us to put everything on the table and discuss about it. And one more through one more thought to be discussed here these days is the need to keep putting pressure from the different institutions 
university activism, private companies to contribute to the achievement of the global challenge. I'll stop here. We have to keep working hard on the achievement of the SDGs and making these processes visible so that things move on and doesn't stay and don't stay just here in this conference, but to spread the debate on social and local currencies to a wider audience. I finish now. I should have added a slide with a coffee icon. You have my email on it in case you want to keep in touch and continue talking. And you know where to find me. I am at Extremadura's university. I belong to the Social Currencies Institute. So um, that's all. You can go for coffee now.